Bona tarda. Benvinguts a la nova sessió. Good afternoon. Welcome to this new session at the M School Exchange. This session is going to be devoted to the emotional education and we are going to talk and we are going to make some comparisons with the previous sessions that we had uh, during this week. We talked about AI and uh, many other things. This session is going to be devoted to the emotional intelligence, so to say. We want to talk about it with these uh, three colleagues of mine, three great professionals I'll introduce very briefly, and we want to talk about what does really mean to live, to coexist, to better manage the emotions, how to deal with the conflicts in this uh, digital era, in a hyper-connected world. Thinking always uh, about schools, uh, thinking about the families, the parents, the children, the students, and the whole community surrounding the lives in the school. Well, I was preparing this session, I had the chance to read a quote, a quote from a book belonging to Rousseau, 1762. It was a book about the education, and the issue that he dealt with was fundamental to me and for this today's session. It is uh, crucial to understand what resource offered to Emily, which was the main character of the book, of this treaty, the treaty on education, and the profession of learning. It is the profession to live. What does living mean in the 21st century? In order to talk about these different issues, we've got Monse Jimenez, um, uh, Mercedes Gisbert, and Maria Pakowski. Let me share with you some logistics for you to better understand how we proceed. Now, we will offer some time to all the different speakers uh, for them to share with us their perspective and what do they think about this topic. We will have time for a discussion at the end of each of the presentations. And would like to know what do you think about the different presentations. If you want to share your ideas, you can do it through the Twitter and Schools Exchange. And if you have questions, you can ask through our chat box. You can share whatever you want, any kind of doubts, questions, comments for the three participants, Maria, Monse, and Marce. Monse Jimenez, he's a secondary school teacher, Escola Badruna. He is also the coordinator of education networks and co-writer together with Daniel Abad of this book that I have here with me. Par inf parents, influencers, tips to be together with the teenagers. He of she offered several proposals in the work field to better manage difficult situations with the teenagers. She offers some tips from an emotional perspective that we as professionals are asking for. Monse, you have the floor. Gracias, David. Gracias a todo el Thank you so much, David. Thank you to all of you. Good evening, everyone. It is an honor. I am very happy to be with you together with Mercedes Verde and Maria. We all share the same perspectives when talking about pedagogy. You know, we met each other through social media, and I'm sure that we will talk about this double reality, this divided reality that we have in nowadays reality. And we also have it in our own experiences, and we are share both the spaces, the offline and the online space. I really like to make something clear. 
I'm not a specialist on emotional education. However, it is true that when you work uh, with a specific method in the classroom, you realize that you need some basics for improving learning processes. Well, we were able to work together uh, with many colleagues and with Daniela Bat, we published uh, several papers and this we suffered the terrorist attacks after 2017 in Barcelona. We made several interviews with the teenagers in order to change the perspective after a terrorist attack. And from then on, we tried to find what are the magical moments uh, to help parents, children, teachers for better guiding our main goal. We always have been working from a research perspective. We have made several surveys to different students, different teenagers, different environments. So we were able to better set the main pillars of our uh, research work. At the end of the day, we realized that it is very important how to deal with the emotion, self-esteem, how to be decisive, the expression, how we express emotions. Therefore, all my professional career helped me a lot to put into practice a series of strategies in order to experience in reality the way of learning from a practical perspective. So we talk about emotions today. We talk about digitalization. Digital world made people to be much more connected. We are more connected among cities, among towns, and the potential of individuals kept on growing. But there are some moments for uncertainty. We don't know what will happen in the future when we think about our jobs, uh, the relationships that are much more complex. The way we learn, it's much more complex. Vulnerability also increases and we are aware about it. And we know that uh, in order to prepare technical skills only and exclusively technical skills, uh, we cannot guarantee the success of the future citizens. So we cannot only work with the technical skills. Therefore, we have this first pillar of digitalization and we also have other kind of skills with our, which are social and emotional skills. I'd like to underline it, several things. First of all, we are talking about some elements that are not physical. We cannot touch them. The previous tradition in which we were in, we um, were used to measure, to have some uh, measurements, to know figures. And when we talk about leadership, when we talk about being sympathetic, these are feelings and we cannot touch them. Therefore, we need to know uh, how to make possible to make these feelings to get in the classroom, how to work with the parents and the families, and how can we help individuals and students to reach the level that we really want from an emotional perspective. So there are some things that are not physical at all. After that, we have another thing which is the social capital, as uh, Robert Goodman mentioned, bonding social capital. So here we are. This is our family. This is our group. We belong to this the community. We share the same goals. We have all some rules. And from this point on, we need to be able to create some bridges. We need to be aware about the existence of other kind of communities and family models and roles. And we need to have an open mind towards the other. And also we need to talk about regulation, right? How to regulate everything. We talk about how to regulate the way we think, the way we feel, the way we behave, the way we learn at the end of the day. So. I really like when we talk about all these emotional and social skills, the model that was uh, quoted by the OCD in the last survey that uh, was made by this organization, they set uh, five categories, right? 
So this could be another way to say things, but these five categories are very useful, not to label things, but at the end of the day, to know what we are doing and what we're making possible, right? I can offer you this study and the survey of the OCD. We talk about emotional regulation. They talk about self-regulation, being open-minded. I love being open-minded, the concept in English, open-minded, open towards experiences. They talk about, participation and also the engagement and also how to develop some tasks. When we talk about the balance, we talk about emotional regulation, where we talk about being sympathetic, we talk about collaboration, where we talk about being tolerant, being curious, we talk about being open-minded, right? How to get out from the walls that hold us inside a limited space. When we talk about participation, we talk about engagement. When we talk about co-responsibility and self-control, we talk about the role that we have to play developing our tasks. So these different categories will allow us to have a clear idea about the different cases that we will be dealing with. Okay. We suddenly had this pandemic, right? And suddenly we realized that we cannot do everything. We are vulnerable. Vulnerability is something that belongs to human beings. We are a network of networks. Everything is interconnected. Any tiny movement will have an impact on the other side of the planet. So we are interdependent. We are intersocial beings, right? And at the micro level, therefore, at our personal level, these kind of changes are needed to contribute to create a macro system inside a biggest community and the global ecosystem. So three main concepts that are really important when talking about vulnerability, being interdependent, we need to be together, we need to get social and also creating communities and global ecosystems. Therefore, we need children, we need teenagers, young people with self-esteem, and they need to be resilient. Maria will talk about being resilient. We need young people, children to be sympathetic, and we need young people that must be responsible with this social engagement. They need to be critical, they need to offer constructive perspective with a positive point of view, they must be resilient, they must be flexible from a mindset perspective, they need to be aware about the environment, they need to be ethical with a social and a green awareness. And so, inevitably, when we talk about it, the first word that comes to my mind is the word community. Without a community, it is impossible to develop all these points. Community, okay, first of all, the adults. What kind of leadership are we implementing as adults? What's our role? Let me tell you that when we were writing our book, some of the questions uh, when we assess the way adults behave, the three main objectives that all teenagers offer to us, we work in rural areas, urban areas, different kinds of schools. Teenagers, they offered us the three main objectives. We adults are seen as silent individuals, stressed and enraged. Well, we are telling to youth, hey, keep on growing, you will be adults. A few years ago, I read in an article at Forrest Magazine, right, that said that adults are frustrated and they suffer anxiety. Teenagers are telling us this on a daily basis. You don't have to read it. Forbes magazine to know about that. So it is very important to take care of ourselves in order to be able to take care of the others. So therefore, as a teenagers, we need to be trained to take care of the others. This is completely imperative. We need to do it. So we, as adults, we are the main influencers. They are watching YouTube and many other social media, but at the end of the day, we as adults, we are the biggest influencers of young people, communities, right? What role we play in community? Also, the adults that are teachers. Students, they are for long hours in school. So what role we have as the leaders in school? We teachers in the school, what do we offer in our classrooms? Because some specific um, sequences of the teaching do not warranty the 
fact of students to reach this level of values that we want to offer to teenagers. We must make possible that students to go from I, 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 me, me, me to we. We need to offer them some learning experiences to boost the creativity, uh, criticism, to fail and to try it again, fail and error, fail and error. So this is always what we really need, right? We need to work with them. We need to have some room for the, the whole community also at school. Everything that is outside the school needs to get in the school. Everything that is inside the school needs to get out of the school. We need to interconnect both worlds and also to boost the abilities and skills of all the students. It is important to have an active learning process. We need to think, we need to be. So we think about being creative. I'm sure that my colleagues here will talk about games, art, touch, to experience, to imagine, to express, to create. They need to do it through different languages. They need to express themselves and also to be able to solve problems, to be autonomous and to be in front of failure, right? And try and to fail. So this is the first thing that we need to talk about. What's the role that we play as adults? And secondly, the learning experiences that we are offering to students, because to me, it is very difficult to develop all these skills. And the third pillar has to do with families. If we talk about communities, we need to speak the same language than the rest of the community. So we need to be responsible. We need to be able to work together with the parents. We need to offer strategies to support learning schemes at home and also to support communication bounds. And otherwise we won't speak the same language and we won't understand each other. Therefore, we need to include this uh, social and emotional dimension. We are going to talk about technology. I'm sure that Marseille would talk much more than myself about technology. We talk about networks. We need to talk about how we manage time with our youngsters. We talk about self-esteem. We talk about self-regulation, the self-concept of themselves, because if we look outside, we cannot find what we are. We talk about being able to criticize in a positive manner. When we talk about sexuality, we talk about the freedom, we talk about education with respect, we talk about self-responsibility, we talk about learning, we talk about this balance and there is this social interdependence, um, this uh, area of emotions. Therefore, we must be worried about all these aspects that are cross-linked with everything that we do in the classroom to be together with families parents otherwise we'll make the next thing hey today we have to talk here in the classroom about collaboration we need to learn that we are all different we all have different skills and suddenly you will discover that you together you will multiply your effects uh, so values are to be lived not to be taught and being aware about values and skills, it is based on the emotions. Many years ago, I talked about the parents and schools. Many years ago, I said that we need to put more emotions to technology and pedagogy. We need to offer to technology all these dimension, and we need to put this dimension into pedagogy. Otherwise, to me, it's nonsense to separate both things. We, therefore, we will be able to improve communities. And in order to improve communities, we need to work in ourselves. I think that my 10 minutes are over, right? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Monse. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your amazing uh, words. You talked about many ideas. And uh, th that's why I'd like to offer now the floor to Marce uh, Gisbert, Chair of Pedagogy at the University of Rovila, Virgili. She is the main researcher of the Berget Research Team, Applied Research Team in Innovation and Technology. She was involved in several research uh, projects in Catalonia, in Spain, and in other countries. She is the coordinator of the doctorate of uh, uh, Pedagogy and Technology, and she's also the coordinator of the FIEP. So, FIEP, the International Forum of Education and Technology. So, Marseille, 
Tell us, you've got the floor. Thank you very much for being amongst us today. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much to the Mobile World. Thank you so much for inviting me and to share this session with all of you guys. Well, I take this main idea that Mons mentioned before, and I'm going to talk about the heart, the heart that is needed when we talk about education and technology. When I was thinking about how to approach to this topic, uh, we've been talking for many, many years about this meaningful learning, meaningful learning without uh, making a technical approach. This is not my purpose. In order to simplify this concept, meaningful, he means that we have more meaning if we are more uh, let's say we work more with the feelings. So if we have more feelings, we will have a much more meaningful learning. To learn, it is a feeling that belongs to us as an individual, but also as a community. Many technical approaches of education made us to forget this emotional part because sometimes, uh, de facto, we can see black and white, what is important and what is not. And sometimes we forgot these uh, feelings when learning. And we forgot the part of the feelings when we uh, teach. Without feelings, we cannot understand education. We cannot understand the school. We also need a community perspective. Well, I was uh, preparing this session. We had a meeting together with David and Monse, and David uh, told us, I think that tribes educate tribes. Well, being in a tribe, it is a very graphic image. Education and uh, training is something that must be built together. It belongs to community, not only belongs to schools. That's why technology make things easier lately. And during the pandemic, we witnessed that technology, well, allowed us to be able to offer to the tribe to get ready to participate in this teaching and learning process. If you think about your kids, if you have teenagers, any young people you have at home, parents, the only solution that they had was to be together with them in the training and the education system. So the parents, they always have a very important role, right? But at the end of the day, they are separated from reality. So the way we learn is different in school, at home, that in a social environment. You could tell me, you don't need the same thing. Yeah, they are completely different contexts. You are right but we need to share our goals and these common goals will allow us to better organize this educational system with a single purpose. After this global approach as a kind of an introduction, I do believe that from an emotional perspective, we must take into account that to learn and to teach it is a process that will allow us to go from thinking to action and from action to thinking, both ways. When we'll be able to reach this strategy, whether for families or students and teachers, will be a much more empowered society from an education perspective. When we think about what we do and when we do and we think what we did, these allow us to have a much more solid and robust process. You could tell me, but we have a problem with curriculum. We have a problem with organized uh, secondary schools, mainly in high schools. Why? Because the environment and the context imposes some paces and rhythms and uh, some knowledge that we have to teach. And it's much longer than the process that we need. It's very difficult to find some space and room to talk about emotions. Sometimes we feel that we don't have time. 
in order to talk about why am I learning this and what's the purpose to learn about it. So to make the learning process to be an active process, it really empowers young people. Those that you, amongst us that are teachers, I am also in an educational center, I'm at the university, and once you offer them a challenge, they are able to get involved from a personal perspective. And this is meaningful to them. It makes sense to them, much more than if we offer them everything already made, right? So students, sometimes they prefer to have things done before, right? Everything will be ready-made for them. It's easier, but it's useless. So we need to set some patterns. We need to set some goals, relying on the responsibles to create the curriculums, but not to complicate and to overload the curriculums, to complicate things and not to reach the goals that are really important to us. So the learning process from a community perspective, so the concept of tribe, the concept of community, if we have this perspective, will allow us, and we have many initiatives, will allow us to have a 360 degrees perspective. This is a fundamental. Why? Because students will learn more outside classrooms than inside. We talked about a fly, but we talk about very different methodologies. Um, action methodologies, but you know what happened? What happened? They go outside, they have to be 10 hours outside the school working and they come back and they tell us what they did, but it's nonsense, right? So we need to see what to do together outside school, in the school, and also from a community perspective. We talk about a collaboration process. Therefore, each and every one of us, we have a role to play. And this role that we play, it will be completely helpful. I don't have uh, uh, children, but I have uh, nephews. And if I compare one with the other, well, they have very different parents, but the model that the parents have to accompany them, they are completely different. So in both cases the family environment has a very clear idea about what's the value that learning has what's the value of education what's the value of intellectual progression once we keep growing and we get older so we need to create an environment that will be able to incentivate and to make kids to get involved in the role that family play for sure. But not everyone is this way. Not all parents are this way. We have different levels of implication and engagement. So we need to take into account what are these levels of engagement of families. The role of technology will be as important as we will be able to attach it to the process, to all the procedures. Technology won't substitute anyone. Technology won't be the single solution. It is a tool, just a mere tool. Sometimes technology motivates us much more. Sometimes technology makes things easier, but it's just a single device. The device in itself doesn't offer anything at all. It's not a danger at all, neither. The danger is the way we use these devices. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was uh, very worried about the idea that it was like a uh, show in the Catalan Broadcast Corporation. They invited uh, some uh, parents, and I, someone said that a 34% increase to porn sites. But no one talked about sex education this is just a single example, right? The challenge was not to reduce the percentage of people visiting and surfing porn sites. The, the answer is to know how to better educate them and how to better manage. This is what Monse said previously, how to better manage the training processes also in a techie and digital environment. Sometimes the parents are worried 
because they don't use properly social media. The problem is that they don't know how to educate them for them to offer a positive structure to use properly. When we forbid something, we, we don't need to forbid anything. I think that the fundamental channel, the challenge that we have in front of us in order to have a better impact in individuals should have an emotional element. And this emotional element has to do with better managing what we are doing to know how to better manage contents, resources, devices, and means. And we need some evidence of everything that we are studying. And the evidence would be how to show the ability and the skills that we have to gather data from a systematic perspective, to better know what is happening in schools and in the educational system. The more data we'll have, the better. This is what David mentioned before. Maybe during the question and answer session, I will offer you more information if you wish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marce. Thank you very, very much for your amazing contribution. I do have the feeling that we won't have time. It's just one hour and a half. Time flies. And all the subjects you are talking about, they are incredibly interesting. So I hope that in the next days we will have time to talk about it and to think. Now would like I'd like to introduce Maria Bukowski. Maria, she's a teacher, a researcher at the Faculty of Social Education at the Pera Terres Center at the Universitat Ramon Llull. She is also a PhD uh, in education. She's got a degree in arts. She's a researcher and also is a worker at the University of Madrid. And also she's a member of the Consortium of Education in Barcelona. Maria, we are willing to listen what you have to share with us to complete what Marce and Monse mentioned. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, it is a pleasure to me to be together with Monse and Marce and to have this amazing conversation. I do believe that it is important to have an open discussion and to reflect on how pandemics impacted our lives. I'm a teacher of arts in the secondary school. I also work at university. I'm a culture and art teacher. And I wonder everything from this perspective, right? To me, technologies are a very important tool, a tool that we really need to rethink. We need to know how to incorporate them in this pandemic uh, situation. Because you know what happened. Pandemic really impacted the way we teach, the way we communicate, the way we interacted with other individuals. It really had a very important emotional impact, but it really impacted on the way we see the world. And also it really impacted the way we learn in the world. Why? Because the digital tools that we had during the pandemic, right? They already existed, but we didn't use it in a proper manner. There were not used as much as we used it during the pandemic. And this made us to rethink the way we use these digital tools. How to accompany this process in a classroom? How to rethink the way we use the digital tools? What's the place that they deserve? Because we as teachers, we use tech, digital tools to teach. But how to accompany students in a classroom? because these are tools, they must be effective. They must be self-discovery tools to better rethink the world from a children and young people perspective, right? So the impact of the pandemics as uh, human beings, it was huge. We are not aware. We are not aware right now. We need more time. We need time to have a 
general perspective about what happened. However, we together, as Merced mentioned, I do agree with her, we need to gather some more data. Those data are needed uh, to better assess what happened. At the beginning, you said something that was very interesting. You talked about the emotions, right? Right now, we are able to better understand these emotions, the emotions we had during the pandemic. When we think about emotions, let me talk about in 1995, Daniel Goldman, he talked about the emotional skills, right? The emotional intelligence. That's when we began to think about the role that the emotions played. So we recovered very important aspects that were latent and existed in the past and the role that education played, right? The, the, the role that the emotions played. And also, when we look these new schools, emotions belong to the main perspective. We really apologize about this sound and the connection is not working properly. So anyway, the, this is the challenge that we have to face, right? We need to think about how to be resilient. Being resilient, it's a very important to us because the idea of being resilient offer us new fields of actions to better train our students. Being resilient is not something that we must take for granted. We as human beings, we are resilient. And we as educators, we must know that we can educate through resilience. And this is a big challenge. Digital skills, they belong to a series of tools that are important. And we need to include in this toolbox resilience, how to be together hand in hand with our students, with our children, with our teenagers, for them to think the world, uh, the world from a different perspective. Now that we are able to learn from a virtual world, we have loads of uh, contents in the network, in the internet, and we as educators, we need to accompany them. We need to foster them. We need to be with them. And this is uh, tricky because we must make kids to offer a new meaning to these uh, things that they are discovering in the social uh, media and in the internet. When my colleagues were talking about all these different aspects. I thought I thought about the fundamental rights. We education, to us education, it is something fundamental. It is a very important challenge. It is a challenge for humanity. And everything that has to do with uh, rights, we, we didn't accept the challenge to protect and to fight for our rights. Unfortunately, we have a, a very big digital gap when we talk about how to access technology and how can we be together with the students for a technology to be a way to make students to be awake, for them to be much more creative, for them to discover loads of information. So now I have loads of ideas, but if you want, we can share my ideas during the uh, dialogue and the conversation and the questions and answers that the audience uh, would have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. I think that you had, you really had a connectivity issue. Your connection is very weak. However, we made an effort to follow uh, almost everything that you said. Thank you so much to the three of you. Thank you very much for your introductory uh, words. Loads of ideas. 
let me just break the ice and uh, let me talk about an idea that uh, came to my mind when you talk about these uh, different topics. This uh, duality, this uh, dual world between this dual perspective, this uh, tension that exists when we, as professionals, we must prepare students towards uh, professional skills, but also towards emotional skills. So we need to teach uh, children to live, right? How can we work this dual world? And how can we develop the different stages in a, a formal a context in a school, right? And the different uh, items that we should include in a curriculum, because Marise talked that everything is isolated, but uh, Montserrat uh, talked about that we need a 360 perspective, and Maria talked about collaboration. So what's your perspective? and how to adapt everything in a formal context. Who dares to answer to my question? You know, formal education and emotions. Well, I dare to be the first to answer to your questions. I last after my contribution uh, for you to answer and to see what's your perspective. Well, in a formal context, to introduce the emotions has been a very difficult uh, thing. Uh, in the past, in the last decades, the uh, much uh, more uh, open-minded pedagogy already existed many decades ago, right? But we always been a servant of reason. As Fernando Banes says, we take decisions. And these decisions that we take as human beings involve emotions. The main concept for you to take a decision, the first concept has to do with emotions. But there is always a reason behind. We, as human beings, we share both elements, the emotion and the reason. So we think and we feel. We can know through emotions, but reason and thinking also from a mental perspective also plays a role when we take a decision. When we talk about a formal environment, a formal context, right? What can we do when we talk about it? How to introduce emotions? I do believe that the, through emotions, we can read individuals, we can have an influence on the students through emotions. This is a basic element of all human beings. Marce, would you like to say something? Well, I think that everything that you mentioned before, before about uh, having different disciplines, we should have much more transdisciplinarity rather than intradisciplinarity, because otherwise we'll be isolated. So we need a cross-linked disciplinary uh, perspective. Okay, if you allow me, I'll back to the beginning of my contribution. Any learning process, if it's not significant, if we don't have an emotional part, it won't last a lot. One of the errors of our formal school system, educational system at all levels, it is that it's very curriculum centered, mainly in the uh, key years. So if we are not able to have a much more flexible curriculum, we won't be able to be flexible with other themes. When we talk about the role that teachers play, they are also is isolated. I don't care if it's in the primary school or secondary school. We have some subjects, we have some separate knowledges. 
And when you finish your uh, university studies or your high school, you have to make a work and you have to write an article. And well, sometimes we include emotions, but sometimes we don't include it. So it's not a prerequisite for you to have a diploma, right? So in our specific case, in our university, when we made the uh, Bologna curriculum adaptation, we had loads of credits, loads of uh, teachers with a coordinator, and each and every team, they react when it's needed. So this involves a common planification. This implies to know what happened before, because you get to the process when the other already finished, and then you have to wait for the next teacher to come. But let me tell you that our colleagues, they are not happy at all with the system. We are uh, preparing a new reform for uh, diplomas, right? So when they want to divide these uh, different subjects, because it's much more comfortable to uh, work in an isolated manner, rather teamwork. So if we have had a much more flexible uh, curriculum, not such a divided curriculum, things will be easier. We tend to discuss when we talk about technology. We need to talk about technology depending on the fields of knowledge. No, not to me. Technology is just a mean from a software uh, perspective when teaching art, when we pick some softwares, there are some softwares that are better to teach sciences and there are some uh, software uh, um, elements that help us to teach much better history. But when we talk about it, we talk about the content. We don't talk about the strategy that the tool offers, right? And we could use the same tool for other knowledge fields. So it is a cultural problem and educational uh, problem. When we talk about curriculum, always we have this excuse. The curriculum says, I have to do this and that, and I have to do it. And this doesn't allow me to think differently. Well. Let's talk about, once again, about the idea of the tribe. Those are taking decisions at a political level will, will have to work together with the other members of the tribe and to join the site, what we really want to obtain and to get. Thank you very much, Merced. I don't know if Monse is amongst us. I think that she's having a problem. While we wait for Monse, I'd like to ask you something else. It's a kind of a provocation for you. I want to provoke something in you. Let me say, uh, well, I saw in your contributions and presentations that many of you, you talked about the role that the pandemic played. I want to know, right, how the pandemic shaped our uh, reality and the disruption that caused uh, in many situations. What do you think we as education professionals, what this uh, pandemic will allow us to rethink, as Mercer mentioned, will allow us to rethink not only about connectivity, which is uh, completely necessary, we need to offer universal uh, connection, universal internet, and uh, everybody needs to have access to the internet, right? Everything that we learned, right, something that we experienced before, but after the pandemic, we have a much more clear idea. Do you think that this uh, should be like a reset moment, like to restart everything? and to transform the education system? Monse, welcome back. Can you hear us? I don't know if you see me, otherwise I'm gonna change my computer. My connection is very weak, sorry. We can, well, I had loads of problems and unfortunately I lost what Merce shared with us, okay. If I go backwards and you ask before that from the pandemic on, we witness um, other things that were uh, behind the scenes, right? 
So the system was uh, curriculum centered. We knew that it didn't work. Uh, we thought that we had digital skills, but it's not only necessary to have digital skills as a teacher. In order to reach the students, you need to create new relationships with them. Otherwise, the only thing that we did was to transfer our knowledge, right? We also realized that it was uh, important to create this uh, concept of community, the concept of tribe, the concept of network, the idea that we need each other, that we need to work together. We as uh, professionals, uh, together with different organizations, institutions, together with the community to go hand in hand and to create these kind of synergies. And also, we are all humans, we are all vulnerable. We must uh, be aware about our weaknesses. And once we are aware about these weaknesses, we'll be able to see in ourselves our potential. So we suffered different emergency situations, right? And things will never be the way they were in the past. We suffered a very negative impact. Our teenagers, our kids, but also during these tough times, we were able to discover new skills. The time we had with our parents, the uh, staying at home. I'm really sorry, Monse. I'm really sorry. I'd like to apologize, but I have to interrupt you because the quality of your connection is a very weak. Everything that you are sharing is very interesting, but we cannot understand properly what you're saying. So maybe, I don't know, you can change the computer again, or I think it's a connection problem. We cannot continue. We cannot follow everything that you're saying and sharing with us, sorry. Anyway, while Monse tries to solve these uh, connectivity issues, let's carry on with the questions. Okay. Well, uh, Marce and Maria, you all agreed about the next topic. How can it came to my mind several ideas. We try to measure uh, success and all the ratings, the country ratings, right? So we have uh, these uh, uh, rankings and we have the GDP of a country, right? And the happiness index, uh, the ha happiness ranking, it's like a nonsense, ha though it's a very important to us. When you talked about emotional education, how do you see, how do you believe uh, that it is will be possible to create holistic proposals to be able to measure this happiness from the uh, school perspective and how everything changed in the last century. Well, if you want, I can answer to your question, and this has to do with your previous question, because I wrote down several things that we uh, detected, right? It is much more evident now than before the pandemic. The, the pandemic really made us to be aware that we as a system, we are not able to gather in a proper manner all the data. And this played a role against us. If we have had different registries and different uh, data banks, we will be able to have different uh, teacher profiles, different learning profiles, and this will have the ability to speed up in a critical moment, in an emergency moment, all the processes. In general terms, there is like uh, 
trend uh, such as the teaching and learning analytics when you talk about these trends you'll be criticized because many people they see that this is negative sometimes we should forget that there are privacy issues to me as a researcher it is important to have a huge number of data for us to better uh, develop uh, public policies because we are never able to have a holistic research the only way to do it it is to get public observatories that in a systematic manner they are able to gather data data that are available for people working in the research field not only teachers that belong to research centers at the university level i think that it is vital uh, in fact last monday it was uh, uh, published the Bufil manifesto they wanted to, to improve the financial system for educational research and uh, Pilar Gargallo clearly said that uh, professional teachers, they should belong to the research centers, right? We, for many years, we work together with the teachers because they are uh, PhD students and they are writing their thesis and they work with our research projects. So we can have loads of evidences. Some of the evidences will be uh, quantitative. We will have others that will be quantitative and qualitative. So we have a development project uh, uh, for digital skills uh, observatory for uh, uh, primary and secondary school teachers. And also at the university level, we have a data analytics part, but also we have uh, some uh, data that will make us uh, possible to assess Maria or Monse, they are working as a researcher and we can dissect and to divide all the actions that they made for them to be involved in the research center, right? One of the critical points in during the pandemic has been the student assessment. The majority of teachers, they didn't know how to assess the students. So assessment, it is a, an evidence gathering process of the learning procedures. It could be amazing to have a single database divided in different items. This will offer us a very powerful tool. This is what the Nordic countries are making. So we never talk about it. We should talk about it, how to better improve our databases. Another weak point, digital skills of teachers, years and years and years working the uh, everything began in 1985 in catalonia we are working a lot for digital skills amongst teachers when we'll be able to assess all the data after the pandemics we reach the level of digital skills of teachers but for many years we never went over 50 percent of digital skills in the uh, teaching community so technology came to be here and for good so we need to improve digital skills that's all thank you thank you very much Merce. i think that we were able to reconnect with monse monse can you hear me can you wave your hand cool now that she's amongst us let me ask you something else when we talk about connectivity right sometimes connectivity doesn't work we can talk about hyper connectivity and young people the book that you uh, wrote together with eva bad uh, together uh, with her you made a, an amazing research you talked about several concepts and one of the concepts has to do with the uh, role of influencers that are always a reference for young people, right? Why am I talking about influencers? If we change gears, if we change gears, I'd like now to talk about something completely different. What could you say about this uh, uh, crisis that we are suffering? There is a lack of motivation due to these high levels of hyperconnectivity. There is a students they don't pay attention in a classroom. 
because uh, students are hyper-connected. They are screen addicts. They only look for likes. They only wish to take selfies, to always being on Twitter, always updating, right? They, they, they try to simplify all the ideas, all these uh, concepts, all these ideas surrounding the use of uh, technologies and cell phones, smartphones, and how this has an impact on the uh, people's world perception, adult people, young people, and how we can tap into it. And from your book ideas, right? Uh, mother and father influencer, Monse, what do you think? I'm really, really sorry. I don't know what happened. I think it was the device. I also changed my device and the connection. I'm really sorry, deeply sorry, because uh, when you lose uh, the uh, contribution of uh, the members of the panel, I, I'm feeling very sorry. Anyway, beyond that, I was writing down everything that you said. Okay, young people hyper-connected. Two main ideas, a very clear idea. The adults are very important. Jordi Juban talked in his book, Digital Families. Families are hyper-connected. We as an adult, we are all, as adults, we are also hyper-connected. Once again, we talked about emotional regulation, self-control, and how do we manage time? Okay, they are many, many hours in front of the screen. You, we need to put some limitations to time in front of a screen. Uh, they've been always in front of the cell phone, right? It always very useful to offer them a tablet for them to watch it on a movie on a tablet when we go to a restaurant instead of teaching them how to share the moment it's easier to offer them a tablet for them to behave so we need to teach families for them to better control the amount of time that they are in front of a screen because when we want to take them the devices they won't allow us to do it, so we must be ready to teach parents. Devices are a window towards the world, so it will be very tricky when my son, my daughter, my kids are in front of a screen, I should be able and I must be ready to talk about some uh, sex education topics, because in a tablet you can see porn, right? So. What would be the age for them to offer a smartphone? We don't know. We need to take into account different levels. Maybe it's positive to be the single one that does not have a cell phone, okay? But maybe you'll be excluded because you don't have a smartphone. What is important? Once the student or kids, they have a device, we should teach them what they will find in a device and also to better manage time. Sometimes it is a quite a great exercise. I was quoting Jordi Jubain and he talks about to uh, he talks about how to assess the time, how long you stay in front of your PlayStation, your uh, uh, tablet, your cell phone, well, loads of hours, loads of hours in front of screens. So I would like to offer you a time exercise for you to teach the students other times that are important for the development of uh, people. Time for being bored, time for physical activity, time shared with others, right? These times are important for brain development and from the cognitive development of an individual. So everything is interrelated. We must be ready for teach about it. So we offer the device, but devices do not change anything. Technology in itself, they can change many, many things, right? Technology can change many things, but we need to be together. And uh, why we are looking for likes? We are looking for recognition and we uh, look at recognition outside. There is a 
YouTube video that it's titled, Are You Living in Instagram? That's an amazing video that you can find on YouTube. So we get ready to show how happy we are to others. Well, you are here, everybody's happy, but I'm here and on board and lonely. So everything has to do with the values, the educational values. Once we offer technology to children, let's think about times. When we are looking for lights, what are we looking for? Self-esteem. So let's teach about self-esteem. Everything is interconnected. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to stop some behaviors. It is a tool. It is a tool that offers us loads of possibilities, but there is a dark side. We need to educate this dark side of technology and social media. And in all the service, we uh, uh, made questions to more than 2,000 uh, students. The first, the first, the first uh, role model is the adult. Marce, you as an auntie, you'll be a reference people. You'll be a reference to your nephews, right? So those values that are not physical always are important. Are we ready to be seated with our uh, kids and students for them to get educated? To me, this is key. Merce, Maria, would you like to add on something or I can ask you something else? As for technology, let me tell you something. Technology is a way of learning. We change time, we change technologies. We talk about uh, digital technologies right now. And yes, what are we really talking about? Well, we are talking about the. Uh, uh, we are talking about a very important pillar. So we cannot only talk about the device, but also how we make information to reach students children and what's the access to information that we have today. If we talk about the digital inclusion, we not only need to get focused on the access to devices and technology, but also access to equity and the digital inclusion. Therefore, we need to accompany all the processes. Inclusion is important. How to include technology, how to have access to all devices and the way that digitalization teaches us, but also we need equity. That's why we as teachers, we are in classrooms to be together with students, to be together with them, to offer these teaching processes and to offer a better access to information with a clear purpose. Because when students, they get access to social media, when they look information, they look for blogs and comments, what do they do? Well, they take a concept, they answer a question, but this is not the idea, guys. So at the end of the day, we want to them to better digest the information. To We want them to become the owners of the information and to reshape the knowledge. That's why we must be creative. And we as educators, we need to boost the way they learn and to make information access easier, but an information that will be able to offer them the possibility to be much more creative when answering questions. Great. I'd like to add on something right now in this amazing virtual panel. Training, all right? We have the training of the future teachers, the uh, future teachers that you have in the university, and Monse and Maria, you are teaching at high schools, right? And also at the university in Maria's case, and also how to teach parents and family members. How can we articulate, how can we create a robust and holistic and a deep teaching procedure, taking into account all the important aspects that we need to convey and all, as a teacher and also as a parent? I don't know. 
When we talk about the training of teachers, well, it's quite a very criticized topic. School of teachers at the university level, we've been always uh, very, very criticized. We are said that we not teach properly future teachers. We have a very old curriculum. We need to update this curriculum. So, since the beginning, and then you have a reform, you need to wait three years at least if you want to change something in your curriculum. So this is too much. We have to wait a lot because the environment, the context changes so much. You have to continuously reform. And to reform, it's so complicated. Anyway, you have to be audited and um, uh, there is a project which is the ARNIF. ARNIF, it is a program for innovation and uh, improvement of uh, teaching teachers. Finally, we reach an agreement amongst the public universities in Catalonia and the University Blanquer and Ramen U to include uh, digital skills to uh, curriculum, right? And also the vice deans of the whole uh, universities in Catalonia and in order to better assess this training, because we were talking about the cross-linked curriculum, not individualized curriculum, anything that has to do with a horizontal perspective belongs to everyone, but it doesn't belong to nobody. So at the end of the day, we were able to reach something very, very important. This is something that we only had here in Catalonia. They, uh, in other regions in Spain, they were not able to get it, but we were able to include this skill in uh, the uh, curriculum for uh, teachers. So it's just the first step. Therefore, as I mentioned before, the uh, teacher's curriculum has loads of silos. Uh, we should reform that, but it's just a method proposal. So we need a different methodology. So we need to improve on an ongoing basis the teaching uh, skills for teachers, right? In order to improve the level of quality of the uh, training that teachers get uh, for them to be ready in a real world. Uh, but we need to offer them other training perspective, right? There are uh, two latent topics behind the scenes. At the end of the day, we need to offer teachers the tools that will allow them to be curious, to be innovators. From a professional perspective, being a researcher is not well seen. Uh, Maria, she's just got a doctorate, right? So it was much more important to have a 40-hour training than to get a PhD. Getting a PhD, it is such a long task, but it's very powerful. It's very long, very tough and hard, but it's useful if we are not able to recognize the effort that was made by an individual to be trained with a PhD, we have a real problem as a system. So during the pandemic, we offered thousands of thousands of uh, training sessions, but we didn't, we didn't have hours devoted to uh, social transformation. When you look the amount of uh, offers that exist at the end of the day, they are only useful to solve very specific problems, but we should have a much broader vision, right? Otherwise you are only focused to solve very specific problems. Let's say we have a problem with a sexting, let's solve it. Okay, that's a very tiny problem, but it's inside the context, a context that produces other issues. So let's get rid of the root causes of the problem. Otherwise, we won't know what's the diagnosis that is needed. This is one of the main obstacles that we are facing, and this makes the uh, teaching processes to be very slow. Maria and Monse, what's your perspective from the school? Uh, what's the school perspective? What, what do you think this 
a relationship between the family, school, the tribe, the community, this uh, co-education. How can we train families? How can we help families to speed up the process? What Marseille was sharing with us, and she's right, it really impacts on my daily activity. We should have an holistic and global view. It really lacks trainings, always deal with the contents. We change contents. We ask students in, this, in the classroom, we are asking them, hey, teamwork, be aware about your classmates. Hey, you should have a global perspective, right? And we as a teachers, we also need that. We need to learn to work together. We need to have a different professional and multicultural perspective because we are dealing with a very complex situations. And we need to have an expertise level when we talk about being involved and to get engaged uh, this horizontal vision, right? This vision that is shared by everybody but doesn't belong to anyone. I think that we will improve the quality levels if we are able to get specific goals of each and every of the areas to share a common project. Therefore, we as teachers in a classroom, we need to learn as teachers to better share our know-how our know-how amongst our colleagues, right? This is one of the main issues that we need to overcome. And also when we talk about training teachers, we need to offer a bigger room to have a macro perspective of different situations to be aware, to rethink about it and to offer new challenges, right? To be analyzed and assessed. If I take the uh, ideas that were shared by my colleagues, several ideas came to my mind. Marcel talked about training the teachers. They had to be competent with the devices and the skills. And suddenly I think about the students. What we want from students is them to be innovators, to be the key for change to be able to get together and to build on something new. As Marseille mentioned uh, before, right? With digital skills, they only upload pictures on the Instagram. So if we want them to be better citizens in a better world, they should understand that technology will help them to uh, create a better world, right? So we need to help them for them to have a positive attitude. Therefore, we need to work different aspects, not only to work with devices, but also to work uh, digital citizenship, digital ethics, labels, and so on and so forth. So we need to be together with the students, right, on a daily basis and to have a gradual work, as Maria said. So we suddenly realize that others are different, as I mentioned before, we together, we can have a multiplier effect and all the experiences will allow us to better build and to consolidate values to reinforce skills that belong to students and we as teachers we should be able to gather all the benefits we need evidences we need to prove that it that we progress and the progression is real for helping students to build a better world when talking about the families and parents, we need to speak the same language. We need to avoid the creation of new gaps. We talk about technology. What happened during the lockdown, right? This is something that I shared in other forums and other panels. Once they got the device, the device was useless because they didn't learn anything because of families, they have different needs. So we need to share the meaning that we live, that we experience. We need to open classroom doors for families to be in, to be together, to create bridges, to dialogue with them, 
and uh, teachers, mothers, uh, fathers, parents together will need to talk about the needs that young people and kids have. Everything that we said, so it's tricky, right? And it's difficult. We have the kids, right, that do not accept failure. They have a very low self-esteem level. There are lots of anxiety cases. They, 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 they feel that they won't overcome, right? Uh, mainly in high school, they also suffer a lot. Therefore, this means that we as teachers, we should offer them an answer. We should be trained uh, and to get some skills that we didn't have in the past to take care of, about us, to take care about the others. We need to get better trained. We need to keep on learning on a constant basis, right? Change is constant. We must be ready as students, whether we are a parent, whether we are a teacher. We need to offer them the answers. That's all. Yeah, and also the role that research plays, culture, education, policies that will help us to better research. Teachers working uh, on the field on a daily basis, we, the three of us, working on a daily basis in our different centers and schools, universities, right? We should have time to research, to help other teachers, to improve the level of knowledge, right? Me as a university uh, as a teacher, when I work in the social, social education faculty, loads of students, they uh, come and they talk to me, hey, this is what we are detecting in this school. They are suffering this and that in this school. These kids, they have this problem. They offer us the reality of things, right? So this offers on a first-hand basis, a very valuable information. What are we doing from a cultural perspective? What are we doing from a pedagogy perspective? How we're putting into practice different policies when we talk uh, with uh, young people, young people, and we as teachers that we are in the university, how can we make possible to have a bigger level of research, research that will help us to rethink all together, right? Because many times these research studies and surveys, they are very vulnerable, right? It's very difficult to have a solid and robust conclusions. We don't have enough money. We don't have funds. We don't have enough budget for uh, researchers to carry on uh, working and to assess and to analyze the information and, and to be aware about different pedagogy theories. Yes, okay. We are uh, running out of time. We've got a few minutes. Therefore, I'd like to conclude. Uh, if you have an urgent comment, to go ahead. So I'd like to ask you a final idea. What can I say? Well, many brilliant ideas, and it really echoed a lot. One of your final comments, it really made sense to me. The next idea, digital skills are important. However, emotional skills are as important or as technical skills. Therefore, sometimes we forget that it belongs to a less privileged level. It's important to be aware about emotional education. The main goal of education, it is what Rousseau mentioned, right? This social contract, how to learn to live and to live well from a philosophical perspective, to live as an individual in this society, and also to have a good life. And also, on the other hand, the role of the school, the role that schools play, and you as educators, the role that you play, without forgetting that we are all in a tribe. We need public policies. We all belong to this community. Everything that surrounds a student must be assessed carefully. And we as an adult, we as adults, we are the influencers of young people. And Monse, do you agree? 
with you. Technology and pedagogy must be at the same level. And another idea, right? Merce, you mentioned before, you too talked about putting at the same level technology and education and pedagogy. I don't know if you want to share a final idea to conclude this session. Let me add on something. I do agree with everything that you mentioned before. Maria, she was talking about the role of research. It is key. We must invest to boost all the research fields. And suddenly, we need to be strict. We need to be that sometimes working these social and emotional things like being in Disney World. No, we need to be strict. We need to have a clear idea in mind. You need to know when we will work in a classroom, being sympathetic, being able to collaborate, to cooperate, how to self-regulate. It's not only being funny or being happy, no, right? Yuval Harari said in his book, know about yourself. So let's look inside of ourselves, we as adults, to have this personal growth, to become great citizens, to get adapted to future times. Therefore, we need emotional balance. We need to believe that. And this has to be inside the curriculum. Thank you so much, Monse. Maria, would you like to say something? Well, as for my role that I played in the International Forum of Education and Pedagogy, when I made my research, it had to do with the technology and education with the three main axes. The first axis is how to build the educational process in a digital environment. The second axis has to do with integration and transfer uh, knowledge for innovation and research, many, many times research and innovation, right? Uh, that usually is forgotten and it's only in a hard disk of a computer. Uh, nobody take advantage of these research and development uh, strategies. And the third axis, the role that uh, citizenship plays from a gender perspective, a global role, also from the tribe, that are, uh, the tribe, the, 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 the community. Uh, it is a very complex perspective, but it, it was a framework that we uh, started to work with in January. We have 60 people working in this uh, project. And if the pandemic, uh, the 27th, 28th, 29th of October, we'll have a scientific forum for uh, 100 individuals that worked right in this uh, project we will be able to interact amongst us and we will listen to all the contributions so it is an ongoing discussion uh, process right that will offer us some papers that will be published as we did in 2014 so after six years we will see if everything that we forecasted really happened many many things didn't happen mainly public policies area well we are stuck everything that has to do with the teacher skills well we are in the same level so we need to offer a new value to better systematize reality whether if it's a micro or a macro reality Many papers say, and many reports are saying that uh, public policies, they have uh, problems when dealing with education. We have a macro, very huge projects. We need micro projects. Uh, micro projects will offer us a better results before public policies reach to an end. And people will be much more engaged, right? This is quite important to me. Something else that I'd like to add, just as an anecdote, despite we see day after day that young people are hooked to technology, we have some students that do not want to use technology. And we must tell them, hey, you have to use technology because you will teach uh, students that will belong to a digital world. And some students, they say that they uh, do not accept. And they tell us, it goes against my principles. Okay. 
but suddenly you can find other students that they are hooked uh, they are hooked to devices so it is completely important to know the reality because sometimes we talk only from our intuition perspective countries that have a very powerful systems they have observatories that gather uh, proofs on a daily basis and what happens in the educational system if we are not able to have these kind of observatories to better master data we won't be able to improve thank you i think that we'll meet in the fiat convention i will be there maria it's your turn you have to close this session you have to close this panel please unmute yourself all right what a big challenge to conclude and to wrap up this intervention and this panel my colleagues offered uh, amazing things and amazing ideas i don't know if i will be able to wrap up but we beyond the knowledge that we have the knowledge that we share with our students beyond that we need to be aware about the role that we play we must create transformational spaces for individuals to get involved with the reality of the world for them to develop their skills to interact amongst them and to reinforce the role that community plays thank you with this final idea, let me just uh, thank you once again, Merce, Monte, Maria. Thank you so much for helping us to get rid of uh, the obstacles and to offer us new ideas. We are facing an inevitable challenge, and I hope that from now on, we'll be able to reflect on that and to contribute with our work. Thank you so much to the three of you. Thank you so much on behalf of M Schools. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.